as we celebrate the life of your comrade whom you have been in the struggle with for a long time. Thirdly, I want to convey the heartfelt condolences of the UPDF on behalf of the UPDF and on my own behalf following the death of our beloved General, General Eli Tumine Tuhirirwe, which occurred on the 25th of August this year at the hospital in Nairobi. The UPDF family, therefore, extends its sympathy and condolences to the departed comrades' family, his relatives, and his friends. As UPDF, we have lost an accomplished general. He was our mentor. He was our model. And like previous speakers have spoken, I can't repeat all that they have spoken. We will live to remember him for what he has done. For UPDF, he has been a very long time member of the High Command of the NRA then and the UPDF now. Obviously, all of us know that he fired the first shot at Kabamba on the 6th of February 1981, and this is what was a precursor for that phase of the struggle that finally led to the liberation of, of this country. He has been part of the leadership of the UPDF and the NRM in various capacities from that time. For us, he has always been a dedicated and hard-working cadre who grasped the ideology of the NRA, UPDF, and he was able to pass it on to the others because, as you know, one of the biggest jobs of leaders is to create other leaders, not just followers. And then he practiced it. He grasped the ideology, the objectives, the values for which the struggle stood. He was able to pass it on to those that came after him and he practiced it. He has therefore been uh, to us one of the revolutionary pillars of the UPDF, the NRA, and the government. The general has therefore been very instrumental in the restoration of the peace, security, and the stability of this country, which obviously we all know are the prerequisites for socioeconomic transformation. UPDF is therefore saddened by the loss of such a senior professional cadre whose 
input has contributed to the environment that we're enjoying now. For the military and uh, professional history of General El Tumine, in the interest of time, if you look at the booklet that was given to you, most of this information is on page 7 and 8. But among others, he joined the forces in March 1979 as a fronasa, and he rose through the ranks up to the time he became a foster general. Among the many appointments he held while he was alive, he was information officer Western Region for the Fronansa. He became a commanding officer. He became overall commander of the National Resistance Army. He became the Army Commander of the National Resistance Army. He was at one time Minister of State for Defense. He was Chairman of the Appeals Committee during the, the RIF Reduction in Force. He was the Chairman of the General Court Marshal. He was a director of external security organization, director general. I think he was the longest serving member of parliament representing the UPDF for about 35 years. Recently, he was the minister of security. And at the time of his passing on, he was a presidential advisor on security. This is not a small feat. He did this because he was prepared through professional and career enhancement courses which he started way back in 1979 during his basic military training at Kakoba in Barara. You had General Mugume telling you about having attended the cadet course in Monduri in the popular known intake of 17 long. He did a combined arms course in the USSR then, 1990. He did a senior command strategic course in 2000. And all of you are aware, he did the senior command and staff college in 2000, stretching into 2005, 2004, 2005. On a family, matters, according to our records, the late general is survived by a widow, Mrs. Jole Tumine, with uh, a number of children, in African culture we don't count children, but his primary next of kin Is Mrs. Jole, according to our records, Jole Tumine, who is his wife, and his secondary next of kin is Daudi Tumine, his son. He has just been here talking to you. 
we shall deal with the family to guide them on how to access their entitled survivor benefits after the burial ceremony. Before, before I conclude, I would like to state that in general to Mwine, we realize that the centuries have given men, many, many men to measure up to the standard of greatness. Many men of worth, of a place in the temple of fame, many men of valor, many of brilliant attainments, and many of splendid virtues. The general was one of those few among such people. General Tumine's rise and rise from the rank and file was not an existence in a virtue. It was a product of the hand of God working in him. I think the Bible says that all authority comes from God in the book of the Romans, chapter 13. So he was a product of the hand of God working in him. Obviously his self-discipline and the selfless mentoring of our president and commanding chief, which inculcated in Uganda, which was inculcated in Uganda's revolutionary journey. And as such, in general to Mine's journey, there was no Kubahatisha because he had the best mentor in the name of our commanding chief and then he had the hand of God. These ones helped him to catapult through these ranks to the rank of a four-star general at the time of his passing on. We also all know that the general spoke what he believed was the truth in the face of the beneficiaries of what he was talking. No considerations could turn him from his path and no inducements could solve his inflexible devotion to truth. This is a rare virtue among humans. Some of us who used to interact with him and worked near him, if he had a point, he would push it to the end. And if you, you were about to divert him, he would jump on and say, listen. I say, listen. Ah. Now, who are you not to listen to a four-star general? You did listen, and he would take you back where he wanted to take you. General Tumine has therefore, according to us, lived a fulfilling life. As one gentleman called Walter Wasserman said, that the greatest achievement of humans ever accomplished is life on earth. However, the African wisdom cautions that we live this life on the basis of legacies. Life is the beginning of death, and since no one would live forever, then live a legacy. This is not a legacy at law, but to put a stamp on the present and the future in order to make a contribution 
for the future generations. General Tumwine has left that legacy that makes him as one of the patriots who were cast in a grand mold, mold and made of different and finer metal worth it to be classed. He was a teacher, and as I said, he was a role model of very many. To the family and all mourners, Romans chapter 8, verse 31 to 39. I won't read the whole of it, but it tells us that nothing can separate us from the love of our God and that when we are faced with danger or calamity or even death, it is far from the thought that God has abandoned us. I therefore want to comfort the family and the mourners and your excellency the president with another verse in Matthew chapter 5 verse 4 which says that blessed are those who mourn because the Lord will comfort them. I will pray that the Lord will comfort all of us because the passing on of Geno Tumine leaves us with a gap. Fear thee well, dear Geno, El Tumine, may the Lord God Almighty receive you with all the grace that abounds in his realm. May you rest so rest in eternal peace. Yenumbadi, Chief of the Defense Forces. Thank you very much, um, General Badi, for those very kind and elaborate words. But aren't we clergy? Aren't we lucky as a country that we have a chief of defense forces who quotes from the Bible? I think we are lucky as a country, and God should continue to bless us the more. I want to invite the Minister of Defense to come and make your remark, your eulogy. My apologies. I think it's also comforting to see the respect accorded by the current leadership to the senior leaders. I wish even in politics we can learn that. I think we would be a very prosperous country. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda and Commanding Chief, and Mama, the First Lady, the Right Honorable Speaker of Parliament of Uganda, my Lord, the Chief Justice of the Republic of Uganda, the Cabinet Ministers, Ministers of State, Members of Parliament present, the CDF, distinguished celebrants today. Your Excellency, before I read the message, permit me, and this is the only time I have, to state two things. First, that I'm holding the brief for Honorable St. Peter, who is struggling with emotions far away from Uganda and will not be able to uh, attend. Secondly, to put it on record that the first time myself 
de Apollo Kashanku, Ashaba Huntington, the Mugisha Wairindi, Hipu Mwebaze, and the group of Makerere met you at State House as student who had formed the study group. That appointment was made through General El Tumini. Afanda El Tumini, I salute you. Without you, I would not have entered State House Nakasero. Of course, the rest is now history. Fellow celebrants, on my behalf and on behalf of the Minister of Defense and Veteran Affairs and UPDF, I convey to you the privileged family of the late Honorable General El Tumwini, relatives, friends, and in-laws, and to our Commander-in-Chief, our deep-felt feelings of sadness, sorrow, and condolences following the irreplaceable loss of Honorable General El Tumwini. I, for one, before I grew political ambitions and later joining politics, which has since led me to serve in the Minister of Defense and Veteran Affairs as a Minister of State. I am one of those who, as a student, got inspired by achievements, good deeds, and promising strategies of NRA, and not only for liberating Uganda, but most importantly, for making Uganda a better place for us all to live in, prosper, and make contribution to. I know each one of us has and knows something about General Tumwini, but what I'm sure is anonymous to all of us about him is that General Tumwini fired the first shot, which is a clear testimony that he was there from the real beginning of NRA Gorilla War. And to that, we salute you again. We also agree that he lost an eye and still fought on until the end, which really shows us the love, the zeal, and the will he had for a better Uganda. Then for him to could have been found defeating the appointment to the position of the Army Commander. Moreover, the first of NRA is both a clear testimony and recognition of his personal achievements and ability to the cause. At Minister of Defense and Veteran Affairs, we are happy and proud that with all able leadership and stewardship at the helm, we have had a small contribution seen and felt in the huge national transformation of our country, Uganda. And we sincerely owe this to our Commander-in-Chief, General Y.K. Museven. It is our, you, Your Excellency, and with your wise counsel and wisdom that has enabled the likes of the fallen comrade, General Tumini, and others, both departed and living, do and achieve what we are here uh, talking about. Suffice to say, General El Tumini was one of the lucky ones. He, in his childhood school study, became a student of the then student teacher, General Museven. He later benefited from the then Goluda War. Commander, under your leadership, sir. Your Excellency, your leadership has created an enriching environment that has proud social economic development, including but not limited to a flamboyant opposition in Uganda. Personally, as an NRM cadre who desires and aspires to move Uganda forward through NRM agenda, 
I shall never forget where the NRM, NRA has brought this country and shall remain indebted to the contributions of the likes of Honorable General El Tumwini through their charismatic actions and through the official positions and appointments they've held. Dear celebrants, I'm at loss of what to say about the hero laying before us because me standing here in the shoes of Honorable Sempija, my senior minister of State defense and veteran affairs, who was caught by this demise out of the country and claimed to qualify or judge the deeds and achievements of Honorable Ellie is like a catechist standing to qualify and evaluate the deeds of a pope. Nonetheless, <laughs> permit me to acknowledge that General Tomuine loved the UPDF, and the UPDF loved him too. The reason he has served at his top, topmost governing body, the High Command, the Defense Forces Council, on top of representing it in Parliament for over three decades, as you well know. And I want to proudly say, in my firm opinion, that nobody loves Uganda more than the UPDF. And as such, and as such, the man, General El Tumwini, could not have loved the UPDF that much and fallen low on loving Uganda. Dear countrymen, in your respective capacities and our esteemed UPDF, Uganda has lost a think tank of our contemporary times because his historical role in the NRA UPDF and the role he played in our 1990s Constituent Assembly that promulgated our 1995 Constitution is evident. We shall miss him, and we shall miss his well-informed and unambiguous pieces of advice and guidance. Allow me once again, on behalf of the Ministry of Defense and Veteran Affairs and UPDF, to thank you all for being with us to afford and accord our beloved Foster General, Honorable Emeritus Member of Parliament and Minister El Tumwine, a befitting send-off. In the second, in the, as Second Timothy 4, 7, well puts it, you have fought a good fight, you have finished the race, and you have kept the faith. Goodbye, Afande General Tumwini. And may God bless you all and the family, Jacob Oboz, for Honorable St. Peter. Oh, thank you very much, Honorable, for both of both. Of course, if I add on other words, I will be applying my biases because lawyers speak so well. Uh, allow me to invite Jolie, the wife of General Tumine, to come and speak. I'm sure you notice we are really coming to the end. I want to thank you very much for being very, very good people. Thank you. Praise God. <laughs>